Hey guys, today I'm going to show you a pickup for Standard. And I've been playing Standard a lot. I don't know why, but Standard and Pokemon Go are my two favorite. I'm at level 25 in Pokemon Go now. So that's cool. I walk around my Lapras trying to find these candies at like 5k. But this is my haul. It looks like it was a $166 for this particular haul. As I'm checking the math right now, yep, $166. And I'm going to go over why I picked them up. And I picked up a playset of Nahiri. Nahiri is around $20 online. Uh, her foil, I think, is around $40. That was probably the majority of the pickup. This package, I think, I got for around $86, which was $15, $15, $15, $45, $40. Yeah, $85, $80, I'd say. Um, Decoration Stones, pretty cool. Anguish I'm making and Reality Smashers. Matter Reshapers is $2. And then I'll go into these two later. But the Adrazi are just very, very good. As someone who's played Magic for a long time, I've never seen creatures this powerful before. And I hope I never will because it's just too OP and so easy to activate. The colorless is kind of a not. Typically a restriction, especially when you have pain lands, which are tri-colors. So in the Adrazi deck, the pain lands are actually better than dual lands for legacy because they produce free colors and life is not really that relevant. So matter reshaper, I like that one. It's the cheapest of the bunch. It's definitely a good entry point. It's around $2, $3 right now. And very easy to trade for. People have it a ton of. I do want to also talk about this particular set. I don't believe as much of this was open as something like uh, Shadows or Zendikar. What happened was people were exhausted after buying cases. I know my friends who normally buy a box of something don't buy a box of it anymore for a battle for Zendikar. They bought several cases of it. And yes, they had a really good deal, like $80, $81, and they got their expeditions and Everything was very crazy, but when they spent all their money on that set, no one had any money money left over in this set. And this set was phenomenally better, the set, I'm not talking about the Expeditions indie set, than, uh, than the uh, Battle for Zendikar. So I like, this, I like this set a lot because it could turn out, assuming Magic holds popularity, in which everyone would benefit if it does, it, turn, it might turn out that this set was not opened as much as we believe it was. And definitely when you have a sandwich in between Zendikar as well as the Shadows, two very widely open sets, it may not have the run a lot of people believe it does. So I'm collecting these. Uh, these are very cheap. Reality Smasher, I think, is also 2 to $3. Dot Notch here is slightly more expensive at 4 to $5. But... Wow, I mean, it's a 4-4 that grabs your... So, Vendillion Click, let's talk about Not Nas here. Vendillion Click is very comparable, in my opinion, to it. But this one is actually better, because you give your opponent... Your opponent has to kill it, and they can't lightning bolt it to get the card back. So not only are you picking their best card, you are also taking the card from them, unless they can somehow kill it. And... A lightning bolt is not going to do it. They can path it, which is fine because you get a land in return, but at the same time, it's very good. There's a reason been dealing click with a 40 plus dollar card for a very long time. This card is a lot more playable because more decks can run it. Next, uh, Arlen Cod. I've always liked Arlen. Uh, she has not found a deck in home yet, and her price is very low. As of this recording, it's like four to five dollars, maybe six dollars. I think I got these for fifteen for three of them at my locals, and they are very easy to trade for. People are not impressed by her. I like her a lot. It would not surprise me that if a red green deck emerged from Kaladas, not from you know just Kaladas, but from you know the next set, A for Revolt. And they had really good burn spells, really good, you know, pump spells. It would not surprise me that this card would go up in price. Next, uh, foils. Uh, now would be the time to pick up your Eldritch Moon foil lands. Foil lands are always very uniquely situated in that EDH players will also want them. 
Uh, they're not at they're kind of at all time low right now because people have just been exhausted in terms of money spent. So picking foil El Aldric oh these are shadow sorry foil shadow lands is a good I it's good because when we go to Kaladas and we have the enemy fast lands, what happens is the lands from the previous block get more expensive. And they will continue to get more expensive because there's less common. People opening the new stuff, opening less of the shadow stuff, and they become very good trade bait. There's actually no better trade bait than lands because everyone needs them and, if you, can, and you can trade them in playsets. I love trading stuff in playsets because it's very easy for you to trade up. And I define trade up as trading four cards for one card. And that's something that you should always look to do. So let's say these lands are, I have four foil ones and I can trade them for five bucks a piece. Let's say eight bucks a piece and that would be $32. Well, $32, you can trade for multiple very high quality cards. You can trade for two Nahiris, uh, maybe, assuming, uh, I mean, maybe you had to add something else. You probably need to add maybe Arlen or something to make it balanced. But you can trade up into more valuable cards, which is something that I like for lands. So whenever I can trade into lands, I definitely will. Whenever I can trade out of lands, I typically trade them out as a play set, therefore getting maximal value. So these are my pickups, and I will probably throw these in modern as well, because I do want to talk to them, talk about them more in detail in modern, because that's something that I think it should be I should make a separate video for it. Anyway, bye guys.